Hi, and welcome back once more to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. The topic is welfare economics, and we've been looking at producer surplus. What is it? It's the amount that a seller receives, less the opportunity cost of a seller. In other words, producer surplus is simply the seller's gains from trade. And in the last presentation, we noted that the producer surplus is the difference between what the sellers receive and the total opportunity cost of what they sell, and that we can get producer surplus by looking at the area under the price sellers receive, above the supply curve, up to the quantity sold. But so far we've only done that for an individual seller. We've looked at Angie and we've looked at her producer surplus. But when we go to a market, we're going to be interested in the producer surplus to all the sellers. What is the welfare from trade, what is the gains from trade for all sellers put together? To get that, we have to look at the market supply curve. And remember that, we get the market supply curve by looking at the horizontal sum of all the individual supply curves. But the individual supply curves give us the individual producer surplus. It's just the area under the price, above the individual supply curve, up to the quantity of the individual cells. So when we add individual supply curves up horizontally, we also add horizontally the individual producer surplus. So we know that the producer surplus at the market level is simply the area under the price line above the market supply curve up to the quantity traded. For example, if the price of apples is a dollar, and in the market, four tons of apples are sold each day, then the producer surplus from that trade in the market is the area under the price line, above the market supply curve, up to the quantity traded. And that's simply the pink shaded area on our diagram here. But notice that we are using the dollar is a dollar assumption. So if Angie sells apples, and we also have Andrew selling apples, and if when the market price is a dollar, Angie sells two apples and gets producer surplus equal to 70 cents, and at the same price of a dollar, Andrew sells apples and gets producer surplus of, let's say, $2.20, then we get the total producer surplus for Angie and Andrew, their market producer surplus by simply adding up their individual producer surplus. 70 cents for Angie, $2.20 for Andrew, that gives us a total producer surplus for Angie plus Andrew of $2.90. 70 plus $2.20. Notice how this is using our dollar is a dollar assumption. We're simply saying that a dollar to Angie and a dollar to Andrew have the same weight. We give them equal weight, we just add up the amount to Angie, the amount to Andrew to get 290. See this, what would happen if Angie's producer surplus wasn't 70 cents but was in fact a dollar when the price is a dollar? So Angie's producer surplus is 30 cents higher, but let's imagine that Andrew's producer surplus just happens to be 30 cents lower at $1.90. What's the total producer surplus? Well, it's still $2.90. We just add up the dollar plus the dollar 90 to get 2.90. Notice that Angie is 30 cents better off. Andrew is 30 cents worse off, but under the dollar is a dollar assumption, we don't care. Transfers between Angie and Andrew are not weighted. They're simply a transfer. We don't care if Angie gets the money or if Andrew gets the money. That is the dollar is a dollar assumption. And it occurs whenever we look at market producer surplus or market consumer surplus. So now we have our basics of welfare economics, we're going to start applying it to some real-world examples.